Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be looking at a really, really nasty security bug in iOS and macOS, which got less attention initially, but is in many ways more concerning. So Apple has released a security update about this. Now, they don't disclose, but then they did afterwards disclose uh, what happened here. So Image.io had a vulnerability. Processing a malicious image file could result in memory corruption. This means there was a memory safety error, which ultimately the result of this is that in an extremely sophisticated attack, this could turn into code execution. And it seems like it has turned into code execution. Seems like that's not just a hypothetical. And also for macOS. Uh, and this is the one document for macOS Sequoia, but macOS Sonoma and Ventura have also been patched. Now something that is concerning to me, though Apple have not confirmed, is that chances are, because Image.io has been around for a while, that the vulnerability actually affects older versions as well. So it's possible that if you have an older device that is not capable of running this update, you may be permanently left in a vulnerable state. Now, why is an image I.O. vulnerability? First of all, let's explain what that does. So image I.O. is a core piece of iOS and macOS shared code, and this is what lets Macs and iPhones, iPads, Apple TVs, Vision Pro, if you're one of the people who bought one of those, uh, read images. Now, the real danger here is, first of all, yes, as you're thinking, if you open an image that is carefully crafted in your photo viewer, you're in big trouble. But if you think about where images are displayed in macOS and iOS, in some cases there is a zero interaction way for a remote attacker to get you, right? You can send an iMessage that contains a text and an image. That image can get, although if you enable lockdown mode, it won't get, because they this isn't the first time this framework has had a security problem. If you have lockdown mode off and you get a text with an image on both the Mac and the iPhone, that image can be rendered, which meant, means it went through image I.O. So that's why this is such a severe problem. And as Apple does call out, it has been exploited in an extremely sophisticated attack against specific targeted individuals. That probably means a state-sponsored attack of some sort. But what I have been reading is after this became known, and for a while it wasn't super well known, people in cryptocurrency breaches were starting to get texts with suspicious images. So it may have gotten more widespread now that the vulnerability, at least the basics of it, is known, which I'm going to show you in a second. So let's take a look at what's really going on here. Now, first of all, I wanted to show this isn't the first time this happened. There was another vulnerability in 2023 called Blast Pass. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we just got right past you. Citizen Lab found an actively exploited zero-click vulnerability being used by the NSO group, which is uh, an Israeli uh, group, and they may have been using it uh, for their own purposes. And once it becomes known, it starts to be used for other things. Now, Apple immediately issued CVEs and patched these vulnerabilities. Apple also has lockdown mode specifically for the types of people who are likely to be targeted by state-sponsored actors. In many ways, Apple is very good at security. I've said this before of the major desktop operating systems. I do think they made some mishaps here. I think for one, the fact that they put kind of buried the macOS vulnerability, most people thought it was just an iOS problem, uh, wasn't great. Uh, and the fact that this kind of vulnerability can happen, this is the type of code path you would think you would put the absolute maximum scrutiny, memory safe languages, anything to avoid. So now let's look into the specifics of this vulnerability. The subtlest devastating vulnerabilities that security dreams or have nightmares about. I'm definitely in the nightmares camp. It's one of those things that you would have thought I would have thought at least a few years ago before I really got into this. No, no, you're crazy. That's not possible. Uh, so what happened here? Out of bounds write issue was discovered in their implementation of JPEG lossless decompression, which is relatively uncommon, which processes digital negatives. Negative is a type of uh, photography, so that uh, thing. And digital negative, basically, there there's a thing called a raw format that photographers use, and it allows them to get more granular control after the picture has been taken. It lets them adjust some settings. Yes, that's bad news. That this was likely discovered after being weaponized. 
Now what it's done here is the digital negative declares that it has two samples per pixel. The JPEG actually only has one. This means that the decompression will go beyond the allocated buffer. Now as you know, as we've seen in Call of Duty games, once you're writing into beyond an allocated buffer, you are now squarely into the dominion of undefined behavior, and depending on what else is near the memory that you've just overwritten, you can now end up with a remote code execution problem and other serious security vulnerabilities. So this researcher also designed a in Rust, which is kind of a it's a good there's a bit of a message here. <laughs> Let's get our memory safety up that can actually detect whether an image has done this. And it detects the other problems as well, forced entry, blast pass, triangulation, and this one. Yep. And that's the main problem. So using this tool, you can tell if someone has attempted to send you one. If you've received any suspicious texts with images, it may be a good idea to use this tool just to check. Another red flag is suspicious crashes, because in many cases, when a buffer gets overwritten, if it isn't perfectly crafted to create some sort of code execution, oftentimes it will just crash, because a piece of memory that the application is relying on is now saying something very different. Now it's going to be hard to ascertain where the vulnerability truly began. And this is, in my opinion, probably the worst thing Apple does in terms of security is just by both ending support at device level, especially on their Macs, which don't get, uh, sometimes don't get a super long uh, amount of software support, and then only patching three operating systems back. Operating systems come out every year. So in practice, Apple provides three years of, so of security updates. So if you're running a version of macOS that's older than three years, which would be anything macOS Monterey or older, you're now potentially vulnerable. With iOS, uh, it'll be three versions back as well, but there, I mean, I, mobile phones usually have a, a shorter replacement cycle. And there isn't a lot you can do. This API has been in macOS since 10.8, 10 which was a very long time ago. I think that's either Mountain Lion or Mavericks. Mountain line, yeah. So that's that's like 13 years. Whether the vulnerability has been there the whole time, I, I imagine that kind of a vulnerability in a pretty un, a pretty low usage thing probably came about when they added support for raw images. Yeah. So my guess is this is a pretty uh, long-standing vulnerability. Another thing I'm not a huge fan of in terms of Apple's response here is maybe just saying somewhere like, yeah, this probably exists in older versions. So what can you do if you're running an older version? Really nothing, because lockdown mode, which does help mitigate this, was also added in macOS uh, Ventura. So you may be able to use unofficial patches to update macOS beyond. I don't think you can do that with iOS. Turning off notifications might help a bit. And of course, depending on what you're using the device for, the nuclear option of just removing iMessage... Uh, which is the main risk. Uh, there are others, like if you download something uh, in the bottom dock, uh, a preview might pop up. Really, there isn't, like, th there's no perfect solution here I, I can think of if you're on an older version, sadly. It's going to be all for me for now. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I find it scary when you see any kind of no-click exploit. But especially something like this that relies on a very low-level flaw in the operating system that's been there for a long time and just didn't get discovered for years. It's all for me for now. Bye.